So far, we saw successful liftoff at 1.47 a.m. Eastern Time, um, all the way through separation from the core stage. We now have Orion and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage flying free. And we've just heard that we have initiated solar array deploy. So we are turning our focus uh, to that. The spacecraft was running on battery power, but stretching things wings will allow it to stop relying on those batteries and significantly extend the time it can stay in space. So solar array deploy takes about 12 minutes. We have four solar arrays that we need to deploy and latch. These will provide power to the spacecraft on its journey to distant retrograde orbit and all the way back to Earth. Once these are properly configured, again, Orion will no longer need to rely solely on battery power. And we expect this to be done about 30 minutes after liftoff. Right now, we're 19 minutes since liftoff today. Uh, Orion is now traveling 17,175 miles per hour. We're continuing to hear good calls here in Mission Control Houston from the flight controllers monitoring the mission. A little bit about these solar arrays as we wait. Uh, again, we heard the call that the deploy has been initiated. We'll hear a little bit more about that um, once they start to unfold. These four solar arrays generate 11 kilowatts of power, which is enough electricity to power two three-bedroom houses, and they have a wingspan of 63 feet. Just one of these six and a half by six and a half foot panels has uh, 1,250 solar cells. So you're looking at a total of 15,000 solar cells. Now we just heard the call that all four solar arrays have been released. So we initially heard the initiation call. That command had been sent. Now those four solar arrays are released. Again, this is about a 12 minute process. The solar arrays will deploy straight and you're getting a live view right now. This is really exciting. Uh, they'll eventually be swept back against the vehicle prior to translunar injection burn to prevent any loads from breaking or damaging the arrays. And on the end of each solar array is a camera that will capture imagery for us throughout the mission, along with a few other cameras placed outside and inside the spacecraft to help us monitor and perform various other inspections. Of course, if you recall the Apollo capsule design, there were no solar arrays. We had fuel cells instead. So this design with arrays gives us the opportunity to stay in orbit longer since we practically have no limit to the energy available for use from the sun. Coming up on 21 minutes since liftoff. Orion is attached to the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. You can see those four solar arrays unfolding now. And again, Artemis 1 is a flight test. It's paving the way for a sustainable presence at the moon. Looking forward to the future, Gateway will be our space station in lunar orbit. And we have some similarities and differences in the solar arrays unfolding right now on Orion and those that'll be on Gateway. So like we're seeing now, these are deploying autonomously. Uh, the Gateway solar arrays will as well. And while these generate those 11 kilowatts of power, the two rollout solar arrays, or ROSAs, on Gateway will generate 60 kilowatts of power. That ROSA design is currently being tested aboard the space station. We have two new ones installed and a spacewalk conducted earlier today, preparing for another set. Coming up on 22 minutes since liftoff today, Orion and the interim cryogenic propulsion stage traveling over 16,800 miles per hour. The solar arrays deploying now are part of the European service module. It's comprised of 20,000 parts and components. The service module was de developed as part of an agreement between NASA and the European Space Agency, or ESA. This is the first time NASA is using a European-built system as a critical element to power an American spacecraft.
Coming up now in 24 minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, spacecraft now traveling at 16,500 miles per hour around the Earth. We are in solar array deploy and we have confirmation all four arrays are deployed. Coming up in a little less than 30 minutes is the Perigee raise maneuver. And with our launch at 1.41 Eastern time this morning, we are looking for a perigee raise maneuver about 53 minutes into uh, today's flight. Again, we are now 25 minutes and 47 seconds into the flight, and we have a complete deployment of all four solar arrays. Orion's journey to the moon continues as planned. Again, looking forward to that perigee raise maneuver. That'll be coming up uh, again at about 53 minutes into the mission, so about 27 minutes from now. During the perigee raise maneuver, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage will use its RL-10 engine to lift the lowest point of Orion in Earth's orbit. The current orbit is more of an oval shape than a perfect circle, and this burn will raise that point closest to Earth and make the orbit more circular. This will also include a checkout of Orion's systems and any adjustments to the solar arrays. It'll be a short burn, less than 30 seconds long, but critical to keep us on track, and it also prepares us for the next engine burn to send Orion to the moon. That's the translunar injection burn. That'll come up a little later, which is a longer burn, another firing of the RL-10 engine on the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. We caught a glimpse there of those solar arrays, and with all four solar arrays properly deployed, Orion's journey to the moon continues, and we've got more operational updates coming up shortly.